These things have to be one of the most iconic looking cars. You see the colors, you see the stripes, everyone knows what they are. So for 1966, Shelby had a fresh idea to try and sell more cars. He knew that if guys got behind the wheel of one of these things, they would fall in love. After all, once you hop behind the wheel of a race car and get a taste of what that feels like, it's pretty easy to be hooked. So they came up with this plan called Rent a Racer. They did a deal with Hertz Rental Cars to send a thousand of these GT350s to Hertz for a Rent a Racer program. A pretty cool deal when you think about it. They didn't detune the cars, they didn't do anything to them. They took Shelby GT350s and put them out on the rental car lot. So the deal was 17 bucks a day and 17 cents a mile. Really an incredible deal to get your hands on a race car when you think about it. I mean, the stories and the folklore behind these cars is out of control, you know? There's stories where cars were getting returned with roll bars welded in them. Cars were getting returned with the wrong engine in it because guys had stolen the engine and put it in their race car. Bottom line is, a lot of these cars got rented on Friday and returned on Monday, if you know what I mean. But I think despite all the abuse that these cars took, it was still a great deal for Shelby and Hertz. Hertz got a whole ton of publicity and a huge number of rentals from these cars. And even if it wasn't these cars, guys now had Hertz in their mind as a rental car company. And Shelby got a whole ton more demand than he thought he would for orders on these 66 GT350s. So these GT350 H's were identical to the cars that you could buy on the showroom floor. Pop the hood here. And you see everything identical to the 66 GT350. You've got the Monte Carlo bar, you've got the 289 Hypo, 306 horsepower engine, 329 foot-pounds of torque, zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. You really were renting a race car. The majority of the cars were raven black with the gold stripe and automatics, but there were a few exceptions. There were some cars that were four speeds, some optioned out with the upgraded suspension package, and then they did build a handful of blue, green, red, and even some Wimbledon white cars. They all had the rocker panel stripe with the GT350H in it. But this color combination has a special place in my heart because my dad built his first race car in 96, and it was one of these things. SVRA, the racing association that was running the series he was gonna run in, said that you had to have a real GT350 to run in the series. Now it makes us all cringe thinking about it, but back then, my dad took an original engine GT350 Hertz car, pulled it out, put a roll cage in it, and made it his race car. So this specific car was sent to SNC Motors in San Francisco where it was prepared for Hertz. The invoice was about 3,500 bucks and there were a couple upgrades. So on the invoice for this car, they had $105 for chrome mag wheels and $45.45 for a radio option in the car. $20 delivery fee and $100 freight fee, something like that. So the grand total on the invoice for this thing was $3,857. After the rent -a racer program was done, in 67 they sold these cars. So this car stayed in California, went to a few different owners, and the previous owner did a full rotisserie restoration on the thing, painted it, and he upgraded the car to a four speed, a lot more fun to drive. He kept all the invoices, he got all the serial numbers verified by SAC, all the documentation you could want on this car, and you can look it up in the Shelby registry. So during the restoration, they pulled out the engine and had it rebuilt, so we should probably fire this thing up. Car sounds great. You can feel it in the seat, you can feel it in the shifter, you can feel it in the wheel. These things are a lot of fun to drive. Of course, you've got the 66 GT350 wheel. You've got the Cobra Tack. There was definitely a few differences between the 65 GT350s and the 66s. I did a video probably about a year ago now on the differences and compared the two cars. You should definitely check that out. Click the link right here. 
Although they did make these things GT350Hs, they really didn't change anything. So you see here, you've got the two seats here, fold up, you've got the two back seats, because if you remember, in 65, they were two-seaters, 66, they didn't have to homologate these cars anymore with the two seats, so they gave them the four seats. So it's funny, the 66 Rent-A-Racer program was so successful for Shelby and Hertz, obviously, that they're doing it again today. You can look at late model Shelby GT350s and they're doing rent a racer programs with Hertz because of how iconic this deal was back in the day. When you think about it, this thousand car order was really a big deal for Shelby. You look at the numbers, that was almost a third of all the 66s sold that year. So do you need a car like this? Well, it was pretty attainable in 66. If you had 17 bucks, 17 cents a mile laying around, and were over the age of 25, yeah, you needed a car like this, even if it was only for a day. But do you want a car like this? Do you want one of the most classic looking American sports cars of the 1960s? Oh yeah, you want a 66 GT350H.